And so, here we are at the Judah, and Ishigami's just got news that the Frontier Fleet and the Advanced European Union, the AU, uh, have signed a treaty with one another. It's uh, basically a treaty that's like, hey, Frontier Tech will give, like, Frontier will give their tech to the thing, but the contents are clearly a military treaty. And the Union and the HRL aren't going to take that line down. And Richard, here, is back in action, can see why. Access to the fleet's forces and their teleporting bullshit. Uh, yikes. And, uh... Ishigami thinks that uh, the speed with shit uh, was signed is very odd, because from what Sh uh, Shirin's told uh, Kagali, the whole thing was brokered by a shadowy mastermind. Captain Scarlet's also up and about, and she's like, yeah, it's fucking Hazard of the Martian Bureau, ain't it? Uh, we can't say for sure he was behind it, but this could really ramp up um, tensions between the big three. And that would allow the Martian Development Bureau and Hazard to increase his influence in the Federation under the banner of maintaining world stability. And on top of it off, we still can't do anything against the Boom Army while the Federation says they're friends. And uh, Ishigami's like, yep, Hazard, Hazard's shown himself to be far more cunning than I ever gave him credit for. I thought he was a fucking idiot. Uh, but Kagali says something must be done soon. Give him any more leeway and the Earth Sphere will be, like, pretty much just his. He'll control all of the Earth. Uh, Orb uh, can't take any over action against him, and that's why she's given Shin and Luna to work with UX as an emergency measure. Richard's uh, surprised she's given the, us the two uh, top ace pilots um, from the planet uh, Earth Alliance War, but Kagali says Federation's going to come pressing on Orb now that he knows we're friends with UX and uh, Tatsumi Island. And, uh, yeah, she wants to make sure that those two won't be affected by it. Uh, Richard takes up her offer then, and offers his sympathies. Uh, but, uh, with everybody going, hey, let's all be careful. Call closed. So Richard sees that things are not looking so good, taking turn for the worst, and Ishigami's like, mm, yeah, but about Hazard, though. He was someone whose area of influence was mostly around Mars not that long ago. How's he got so much power so quickly over the Earth sphere? And uh, Scarlet uh, thinks that the Federation government and army is stupid enough. Uh, yeah, she's like, I don't think the government and army will just let him walk all over them. But the army's got an idea. Hey, it's the top two aces of Orb, because they're a pacifist nation. So that's all they got. And uh, here we are in the Rubens Foundation in New York. And Leon's uh, given a call to Rubens here and going, thanks for uh, meditate, mediating the deal. And Ruben's like, oh no, thank you for accepting the proposal. The Frontier's fault technology is essential for the founding stones of the Earth's future. And with this, Ruben's can move on to the next stage of his plan. They're like, <laughs> and yeah, Mishima hopes both their futures will turn out as they envision. And then Ruben is like, ah oh, yes, the Frontier fleet also has scummy men like Mishima at his core. But whatever, the entire world is set in motion. A mysterious hidden person, uh, wonders if Rubens will step onto the world stage himself. And oh, heavens no, he's just laying the groundwork for what's to come. And the guy's like, well, if that's the case, then I'm fine. But inwardly, though, uh, Rubens uh, is like, yeah, keep on watching, buddy. When the moment arrives, the world will. The world will. And then over, Alvis. Uh, Makabe's called an emergency meeting. The Federation knows where the islands are currently at, so he wants it relocated to the northeastern uh, archipelago. Uh, Kondo asks if he means engaging the Brunhilde system, because it's meant to still be disabled. Uh, Makabe thinks otherwise, uh, saying that Solomon's issue warnings for an indicator that she is already awakening. So she doesn't say shit. And uh, they can't allow the Federation to mess with their mission, so he wants the island moved as soon as possible. And so Soshi has a proposal. Uh, just in case the Federation do try anything, send the Fafners and their pilots off the island. That also gets them some live combat training too. Kaname is uh, outraged that Soshi wants these kids thrown into the war outside, but he says, hey, this is a war we're already taking part in. And uh, Karia here uh, thinks it's a good idea too. If the Brunhilde system's active, then that means the island's self-defense systems are as well. They should get the non-Kazuki pilots used to, like, actual fighting. And she figures the UX is the perfect place for that. And then, the UX! You may as well be teaching our kids to be murderers if you send them that, to that mercenary group. And then the carrier's like, oh, really? You've suddenly decided to care? How many people have you already sacrificed in this project? And she doesn't argue back. And then Karia says, what would Commander Minashiro would have said about this if he was still alive? Uh, but regardless, Makabe decides to go with it. He'll set things up through uh, Kagali. And then Toby speaks up again, going, Do you realize that fighting with them means fighting against other humans? 
he says, Yep, in that case, you're going with them to the, uh, look after their mental state. It's like, you shit lady, shouldn't have fucking complained, should you? And meanwhile, back at Judah, Shin and Luna have shown up and they're acknowledged by Richard as being interim members of the UX. Uh, Arnie's uh, worried if uh, Richard and Scarlett are good to go, and uh, they are, but Richard is still can't pilot the thing. But they can be serve as tacticians for our crew, and uh, as for Scarlett, she wants Sebastian to keep uh, manning the wingle. Uh, she's already gained a lot of experience, and she'll be fine. And then Ishigami's like, yeah, I've heard about your Yokosuka, the Bison well, to Tatsumiya. Oh boy, that's a whole bunch of fights. But he's glad everyone made it back okay. Well, it's Zuko wants to know how things are here after fe uh, yeah after our absence, and she goes like, uh, real bad actually. Uh, he wants us to split into three groups and for us to carry out multiple operations at once. And Orbs just uh, paid the UX for the Tatsumiya battle, so Richard figures they got the cash shandy to run three squadrons. Uh, what does he have in mind? And uh, Ishigami says, sort of a self-defense plan against the Federation, and also, and then Misagawa runs in. And he's got urg urgent news. Uh, Garen's forces have just left Machine Island and are headed towards Europe. And everyone's like, what the? And Ishigami is not surprised at all because he's a fucking genius, actually. And so Richard explains to the crew, uh, we can choose who we go with. Uh, the three destinations available are America, Europe, or staying here in Japan. Uh, the main point of this split is to distract the Federation, but there'll be plenty of fires to put out uh, as we go around. Uh, America is rife with the Scrug. Uh, Europe's got the Garen forces, and Japan is the Kato organization. Uh, seeing as we didn't take care of Garen at the Machine Island, Kaido and Magame are like, hell yeah, Europe, let's fucking kill that dude. Uh, and hearing about Garen has also got uh, Fei Yen's interest, so she'll be coming along. And she feels out like Garen's calling out to her. And the Liu Bei crew uh, will also head for Europe, because, you know, they fought a lot on Machine Island. Uh, I think I'm just going to call her Lux, just because it's easier for me than going to Lux all the time. But uh, yeah, Lux was said to America. Uh, while the America that Sakamizo fought in World War II has become the Union, its essence still remains, and she wants to see, like, what's going on to understand the delusion that binds her father. Because he's like, fuck America, I was in World War II 200 years ago, and it sucked. And then ASAP's like, oh, jeez. Getting sucked in deeper and deeper to the Bison World War. I didn't want to be a soldier, dang it. And then Cham is like, hey, the least you can do is help Lux, not fight a war. And uh, and as a holy warrior, he can at least help a girl out, right? And he's like, I'm not one, alright, jeez. And then Cham is like, anyway, I also feel Sho, Sho's aura calling out from America. And also, uh, she feels uh, Marvel as well, which is weird because uh, she fucking blew up. Uh, Richard uh, is like, okay, so that seems pretty set then. And he'd like the Ptolemy to go with them there. Uh, when Sumeragi asks, he explains that the Hardo Financial Group sent a request for the UX. So he'd like, uh, so there should be help with that. So Arkham City will be the, the first stop. And for the Elshank crew, uh, Joe figures that since Roman is still looking for ninjas, they should stay in Japan. And uh, Roman says, well, if you say so, she agrees. Elvora obviously doesn't like that at all because he's a little grumpy boy. And Sun Chuan and his crew will stay there as well because Lu Bu's hanging out with the Kato organization and he hates that dude. Uh, Lu, Lu Shun uh, is dejected that they need to pose on Judah again, but Shizuna and Yamashita are like, ah, don't worry, it's fine, we've all fought together a bunch of times already, right? And Sun Sheng Xiang's like, hell yeah, this is great, I get ya. What about the UX units for real? Where will they go? And well, they're going to America, but you'll see that see Destiny and Fafna are always there. So, you know. Uh, and the Dan Cougar are always there. Actually, the Fafner aren't here, but they're here and here. But anyway, we're doing America first. Yeah, this is why it takes three runs of the game to get all secrets, because you've got to do the whole thing. But yeah, we'll go with America first, and then end with the Mazakaiser boys in Europe. So, America it be. So Richard uh, decides America, figuring that if the almighty Hardo princess is looking to hire him, then something big must be afoot. Uh, Ada fears that the Scrug invasion may be uh, picking up steam, and that's not even taking into account the damn Black Lodge that they're doing with their bullshit. So I was worried uh, for Arnie, and uh, he knows why. If we run into Graham and Jin's team, then they might be hostile to us. And uh, 
Sire says, uh, Even a second of hesitation can get you killed on the battlefield. You're a mercenary now. Make sure you don't forget where you stand. And, uh... Finally, the the Fafners have sent in a request that we take the Fafners and pilots along with us. Shin's, like, surprised to hear that. But he's like, yeah, that's a good surprise. And Richard figures the Alvis have got their own reasons for it. But whatever, they'll load the bots with the Siegfried system along the Ptolemy once they arrive. And then Juge Leon is like, hmm, these plans are quite synchronized. Isn't it strange that the signing of the AU and the Frontier Fleet Treaty happened in tandem with Garan marching on Europe? And, uh... Rennie it does seem like says that the timing does seem awfully good. And Suge Leong says, What would happen if Garan decided to invade China or Japan instead? Would those countries' armies have to contend with Garan by themselves? And uh, he has the sinking feeling that had that happened, we'd instead be hearing news that the Frontier Fleet signed a treaty with either China or Japan's government. And so uh, Moritsugu says, So what you're saying is, uh, regardless of what country Garan chose, the resulting event would have been the same? And Zugalong says, yes, but he's not referring just to Garan's forces. He says, alien foes like the Scrug and the Boom Army, visitors from different universes like us in the Frontier Fleet, the Machinus, the Black Lodge, all these seemingly random events as though led by an unseen hand wound up tying into each other, weaving a complex spider's web. And they go, a spider's web? And he goes, I, I fear we may ourselves uh, find ourselves squarely atop of that web, wholly unaware of whatever lies at its centre. And Richard makes a face. 